What is happening everyone? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. No, I have not been kidnapped. No, I'm not just having a bad hair day, not particularly anyways. I'm YouTubing on the fly and voicing over this series of videos in a lovely Grand Rapids, Michigan hotel room, which is fine because these videos aren't about me. They're about these three Atlas Orion anamorphic primes. So I've tested the 32, 40, and 65 millimeters from this awesome line, and I can't wait to share my thoughts with you all on these things and show you what those tests look like. So this is how we're gonna roll over the next three videos. Focal length by focal length, I'm gonna do a brief physical overview of each of these lenses, talk about coverage a little bit, talk about the build of the lens, and then for the tail end of the video, we're gonna check out a basic lens test I set up in the studio to get an idea of the characteristic of these lenses. And I'm pumped because these Atlas lenses are just wonderfully realized with amazing optical quality and a really lovely sort of quintessential anamorphic look. And these have been around for a while. They're not new. They're just so dang popular. They're always out on rentals and I can never get a set of even three together. Not featured in this series. There's also the 50 millimeter, 80 millimeter, and 100 millimeter. And excitingly, there are also pre-order links on Atlas's website for a 21 and 25 millimeter, which are gonna be the newest addition to the Atlas line. But anyways, this video is gonna be about this 32 millimeter, and over the next two videos, we'll check out the other two, the 40 and 65. So as for this thing, basic white paper specs, the 32 millimeter is the shortest in the set at 6.7 inches, and also the lightest at 4.7 pounds, although most of the focal lengths in this set sort of float around this size and weight until the much longer and heavier 80 and 100 millimeters. Every lens in this set conforms to the 114 millimeter front barrel diameter, which is the size of this little lip down here, though the actual size of the main part of this barrel is slightly wider, probably just like an extra millimeter. Another really key thing to mention with this lens set before I talk about this lens specifically, it behaves like a lens set. When you swap out a focal length for another, the iris and focus gears will always align in the same spot from lens to lens which is an AC's dream. You won't have to readjust fizz motors to line up with each lens, which can be a big time suck. Every lens in this set also has a T2 to T16 diaphragm that's constructed of 14 aperture blades. Additionally, each of these lenses is the full 2X stretch factor anamorphic with an illumination circle of 31 millimeters. This 32 millimeter is the only lens in the set currently that is going to behave slightly differently than the rest of the line, which all have identical sensor coverage. Though the 25 millimeter and 21 millimeter are coming around the corner and I'm gonna say those are probably going to like stray from the set as well in that way. On Atlas's website they list it makes no difference on the Airy Alexa sensors but on red Monstro sensors the 32 millimeter is the only lens that just covers the 7k Monstro area rather than that full 8k Monstro area. Although I shot these tests on the red Komodo's 6k 2x anamorphic mode which is actually going to use slightly less of that image area, but really not by that much. Every one of these Orion lenses follows this build. It starts with that beefy lens mount, and it's just like immediately the aperture ring right at the beginning of the lens in a little flat area with like a top facing focal length and Orion series decal. And then there's a little step up to the focus gear, and then another larger step up in diameter that brings us to the lens markings. And this set I have here is an Imperial measurements, but they do make a metric version. And you'll see those feet markings wrap pretty much three quarters away around the lens barrel and then on the right side of the lens it has those same markings but facing right side up and those are kind of like hidden behind this little window that's built into the barrel here after that it's just straight lens barrel until it gets to the end and you got a couple of top facing logo and decals there that little orange ring at the very end and then that tiny step down for that last half inch or so which I said drops down to that 114 millimeter barrel diameter though this 32 millimeter is the only lens in this set that sort of does this duck bill thing where the lip is only really there at the top and the bottom. These Atlas Orions are not front anamorphics. The front elements of this lens are spherical elements and this 32 millimeters is actually pretty bulbous. And those cylindrical elements that give us that widescreen stretch you can see are a bit set into the barrel. Lastly, just a few design notes here as you've probably seen by now. They stuck with like 
an orange and white colorway for this set with the focal lengths and large Atlas Lens Co. in white there with some lettering on the barrel in like this deep blood orange color and then everything else is in like this construction site orange, which honestly I love. As usual, I digress. Let's take a look at the 32 millimeter in this characteristic test I set up. So here I have Kyle in these stunner shades. He had a wild Halloween night last night. Still agreed to help me out. What a trooper. He's exactly four feet from the sensor plane of the camera. That background is about 12 feet away and I have an object in the foreground at the lens's close focus distance of 1.75 feet. Also near the background is a little Felix light with a full CTB gel on it. Although the flare from this lens will be blue anyways, I just thought I'd give it a little help there. And so as I rack back and forth to those focus points in the frame here, keep an eye on the lens breathing. And it's definitely there, but I think it's maintained quite well. Usually not a problem on the wider focal lengths. I'm also gonna do a large pan across to see how Kyle's face here gets distorted as it gets to the edge of the frame, which I think also handled excellently. And this being the widest focal length, that's usually going to be the most problematic. And I think that's going to improve as we go up. And I'm gonna do that same pan at close focus, and this is gonna be a good time to check out the bokehs and out of focus area, as well as that lens flare from that Felix light. Next, I popped in front of the camera here to see how it treats real skin tones, no offense, Kyle. And I also like to see what it looks like when you obstruct the lens flare like this. At T4, you should notice things appear considerably sharper, less depth of field, so things are gonna get less separated, and especially at close focus. But also, you'll surely notice how the bokehs are going to get a lot smaller here at T4 and a lot more tame. That lens flare is going to get a lot more intense at T4 and take on some geometry too, where we get a little bit of that like starburst lens flare. And we'll check out the difference between wide open and not more specifically in a sec.
Here I'm just moving that hard light source around so we can isolate that flare, shut off all the other lights. And for sure the main difference between T2 and T4 here is that extra blooming you get when you're wide open. And when it's dead on, you can really see that it just creates like a large straight up oval. So that might be a reason to avoid shooting this lens at wide open, could be a little distracting, or that could be exactly what you want. And finally here, I'm just gonna do a little toggle between T2 and T2.8 for a sec to see how that characteristic changes in and out of wide open. And next here, I just went through the whole aperture range of this lens. And that is pretty much gonna do it on this video, doing this quick physical overview and lens test of this 32 millimeter Atlas Orion 2X anamorphic prime for EF mount. If you have any single solitary question about this lens or any specs going on in the red Komodo that I shot this with, drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start our discussion. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We're so close to that 100,000 subscriber milestone. If you have subscribed, mwah, chef's kiss. Thank you very much. You can also hit that little bell button that pops up next to the subscribe button once you do so. If you hit that, that'll keep you notified whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care and you will hear me in the next one.